All right. Hey, dudes. Welcome to Corona Lessons, Volume 18. Wow, 18. That's a lot of volumes. Um, hope you guys aren't getting bored with all this. Um, I'm getting a little bored of all this global pandemic stuff, man. It's like, seems like it's all turned out to be a little more serious than we originally thought it was, right? Um, plenty of time to practice guitar, right? Uh, I got some uh, viewer comments for you, if you guys want to dig into that. Um, let's see what we got today. Uh, Tom, when you're playing, how do you visualize the fingerboard? Well, you know, I did talk about that a few volumes ago, if you were, if you were watching. Uh, when I mentioned that it was a planar instrument, right? Whereas these notes, these Fs, are all the same. It sort of goes like this, right? I do think of it that way. Um, you know, the guy asked also if I think of chord shapes and yeah, shapes and patterns. And, now, and yeah, I think all guitar players do that uh, a bit. But I try not to get locked into that stuff because uh, I feel like that's when you get stuck in ruts, you know, when you're playing shapes and patterns, you know, you gotta be using the ear. That's the thing. Uh, another guy asked about modes and I, I, I know zero about modes. I, I don't even pay any attention to that type of stuff whatsoever. It means absolutely nothing to me. Um, when I mentioned street theory, uh, what I was talking about is, is like how, chord recipes and, um, things like that. Like if someone says play a G7 sharp nine, you need to know that. And you need to know a lot of different voicings of it. You know, you, you know, you, you got to know what the recipe is that makes up that chord. You got to know about stuff like, you know, tritone subs. You got to know about, uh, you know, augmented and diminished chords and all that stuff. And I'm not going to go into all that because because that's there's millions of videos about that by guys that know a lot more about it than I do. But it's those are the types of things that you got to know, right? Um, how to make chords and what the, what the chord recipes are. That's important stuff, you know. Um, you know, uh, here's another question. A uh, guy said, Tom, your time is impeccable. That's not a question to comment. Tom, your time is impeccable. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I, if you guys knew how hard I have worked on that, it, it, I mean, it has been a lifelong struggle. I mean, I was born white, so I was already at a disadvantage as far as time goes. Uh, I remember when I first uh, got in the studio, um, you know, like one of the things you got to do uh, when you're playing acoustic in this, on a this session, country music, you got to learn how to strum a slow waltz, and that is not easy, uh, especially when the click is very slow in the tempo. You know, when you're a kid, like I said, a lot of things you don't practice when you're a kid. You need as a session player. You never know how hard it is to just go. <laughs> sounds super simple but when you try doing that to a real slow click in the studio if you've never done it before it will reduce you to a tiny little pitiful shell of a human being man I mean I remember coming home from sessions after I tried to do that and I couldn't do it and I would I remember when I first started doing sessions many many years ago I cried I was, I was I was so hating myself so bad that I couldn't do that. I, me I remember being on sessions where the, the real musicians were like, yeah, what fader is the acoustic on? Turn it down, because I couldn't get in the pocket. The pocket, the time. You know, I talked about tone, uh, I mean, uh, touch yesterday, right? You know, there, there's like five things when it comes to guitar. I talked about phrasing already. There's touch, there's time, and there's uh, 
there's tone. And what's the other thing I'm missing? Oh, man. Feel, you know, feel, of course. But, like, time is everything. And when, when you know, uh, I feel like, you know, when, I, when I'm, when, when a great musician, uh, all these different guys that I work with, you know, in the studio, I feel like I've gotten to this level where I can do this. You can you can play around the click. When you're first starting, um, you know, you, you're lucky just to get on the click, you know, to be with the click. And then after a while, after you just do it over and over and over, you, you get to the point where you can manipulate inside of the click. You can play around the click. You can put notes ahead of it, behind it. You could sort of be rubber around the click. And that is pretty complex, pretty... Uh, advanced stuff you know but like I'll say on sessions sometimes like I'll say guys we're all sort of playing this a little bit behind the beat what what if we push it to the front of the click and uh it completely and when people start thinking that way you play the track like that and it makes it feel way more energetic uh because you're, you're pushing the beats right to the front and to be uh, you know at that level of musician where you can actually play with time like that is is you know that's that takes years and years and years and all and all this shit that I'm talking about I mean I've had a couple of people make comments about you know uh, I want to quit guitar after watching that you know uh, guitar I don't know if anybody's ever told you this but guitar is fucking hard to play I mean it's one of the hardest instruments I mean it's probably not incredibly hard to be in you know a mediocre guitar player but man if you want to play like Bill Frizzell or Buddy Miller or Jeff Beck or you know pick any of the greats you know Tommy Emmanuel or guys like that you know uh it's just it's a life's work man I mean you know I mean I've been doing this for 40 plus years I mean all day long you know so don't get pissed if you can't play something that I'm showing in these videos, you know, it's, I'm, I'm basically just trying to inspire you guys to like practice really is all, you know, and I'm not saying I know it all, believe me, I watch other guitar players and like Derek Trucks and shit and I just sit there and go, how the hell does he do that, you know, so uh, I know my place, you know, in the, in the totem pole <laughs> of guitar, giant totem pole, mm-hmm, okay, here's another question, um, it's cool that you name your kids after gear, Marshall and Leo. What are you talking about? I didn't, I didn't name my kids after gear. I never, I wouldn't do, do that. That's crazy. Um, here's another one. Uh, Ohio is for prog nerds. Yes. Yes, it is. I love that. Uh, man, I mean, growing up in Cleveland was like, WMMS, the radio station, used to play all this great old prog, you know, uh, the sensational Alex Harvey band from Scotland. Nobody knows about the sensational Alex Harvey band, but they were amazing. Do you guys know about that band? Check out sensational Alex Harvey band. Listen to the song, uh, uh, what would be a good uh, Faith Healer or uh, Gang Bang. That's good shit. All right, so now uh, here's some more. Uh, I was going to mention, uh, okay, yeah, in, 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 in yesterday when I was talking about touch, right, since I'm on the subject of Prague, which is a, which is a uh, ongoing theme with me, as you can tell, you know, uh, I'm going to bring up uh, the most underrated guitar player in all of music history, Ian Anderson from uh, Jethro Tull, the guy that sang, played the amazing flute. And he also played fucking incredible acoustic guitar. Uh, Thick as a brick, Aqualung, all those records. Don't laugh. I know Jethro Tull gets dogged by a bunch of people that don't know shit about music. But Ian Anderson, I mean, come on. Talk about a guy who understands the concept of touch and expression. His acoustic playing is absolutely incredible. I am transfixed by it. Listen to a song called wondering aloud uh wondering like the word wondering but they they leave the e out and put an apostrophe it's on the aqualung album listen to the way he plays that on acoustic um the expression the dynamics in what he's playing 
it's just incredible. Um, I mean, so much like emotion in what he's doing, and the and, he, and he's just playing soft, and he plays hard, and he plays soft, and he's and he's just, just the beautiful dance of dynamics that he's doing. Wondering aloud, Jethro Tull. There's a, there's a a video of a guy playing Wondering Aloud on YouTube on a Chapman stick, a guy named Rob Martino. It's incredible. <laughs> I had stumbled on this years and years ago. It's incredible. I mean, the guy's a freak. Uh, he's playing the, uh, the bass part, the rhythm part, and the melody all on this Chapman stick, and it's mind-blowing. I remember sending a, I sent him a, 10 years ago or something, I sent a uh, comment on one of Rob Martino's videos. I said, dude, you're incredible. Would you please make a solo uh, a, a solo record with me? And he never responded. So I was heartbroken about that. Um, yeah, that's. I think that's about it for today. I'm gonna talk about one more thing. I probably should make a whole other segment about this. I might be wasting my next volume, but I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about one more thing um, uh, that I feel is very important in all of music, especially guitar. Well, not just especially guitar, everything. Restraint. Restraint, man. Uh, I remember when I played a gig one time, and uh, there was a bunch of guitar nerds all there watching me. And, uh, you know, at the, at the end of the show, one of my buddies came up to me and he goes, uh, dude, you were like the most patient guitar player I've ever seen. You know, and I, I took that as a great compliment. You know, you got to be like a, a rattlesnake in a cage. You know, you, 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 you play... You play like you get on a groove and you stay there and and you don't deviate from that groove unless it's a fucking damn good reason. I mean, when you go one of my favorite things to do is to go back on YouTube and watch isolated tracks of all my favorite records and listen to the amazing isolated tracks. I'm sure you guys all do that too, because it's awesome. I mean, there's so much great shit you can you can learn. But you know, and back on these records, man, when these guys would come up with a rhythm part, man, they would just Play it like look look at uh, uh, Richie Blackmore. Uh, listen to the isolated guitar track of uh, Highway Star. I mean, first of all, his pocket and his and his deadly rhythm is is just you know he's like. I mean, it's incredible. But listen to how much restraint he shows in that. I mean, he plays the part. He gets the killer groove. Gets the killer sound. And he just stays with it, man, because it's great. And it's one of the cogs of the wheel that's making that record work. You you add in the amazing bass part and the drum part, and it all sounds incredible together. So why are you going to get off it? I mean, I used to go watch a lot of reggae bands in Cleveland. There was a lot of great reggae bands in Cleveland when I was a kid. And, um, man, the, the whole the trance that is created when you get on a killer part and you just stay with it. And don't deviate. Don't noodle. When you're playing on a gig, man, just get a trance going with a cool rhythm part. Like uh, uh, James Brown records, the guitar. I mean, they would, you know, all those guys would just get on a trance like groove, you know, and they would just stay there, man. No reason to get off it because it's incredible. But then every once in a while, when you let people know you can bite like a pit bull, it's more effective because you've got this. You've got this amazing, you know, sort of chill thing that you're doing, and then every once in a while, at the right moment, you step out and play something deadly, and people are like, "Damn, that's that's good shit." I mean, all the greats do that. That's uh, that's some shit that you need to be thinking about. All right, I've been rambling on. Sorry about all the noise up there. I don't know what they're doing in the kitchen. Okay, Corona lessons. Tommy Bukovac signing off. See you guys.